Today I thought we'd do something different and blatantly rip off a very dear friend of mine, Vincent Schwenk. And I've just been talking with him yesterday and we've been discussing a setup similar to this. Namely, it's this here. It's one of his tutorials he did for Cinema 4D. And if you want to check out how he did that in Cinema 4D, check out his Patreon. And he claimed that it was somewhat problematic to get these wrinkles on top of these kind of deforming textile hoses to properly form and properly render them out. And I thought, why not give it a try in Houdini and talk about some of the differences when setting up a basic dynamic simulation such as this inside of Houdini versus what you'd normally do in a program such as Cinema 4D or maybe Blender. So the very first thing in Houdini that I'm going to do is create those individual tubes by dropping down a circle first, then diving in there and on this circle node setting the orientation to ZX. Next I'll scatter a few points on this circle onto which I'm going to copy my individual tubes. Let's use a scatter sub for that, maybe use 25 points for now. So these will be the points onto which my tubes will be copied. So let's create the tubes by using a single tube node here. Let's highlight this and let's decrease its scale to say 0.1 units and its height to four units. Also, as you might notice by this line drawing here. This is not a polygon yet, so let's set its primitive type to be a polygon. And in my previous tests, 128 rows and 24 columns yielded a nice mesh like this, somewhat uniformly subdivided here. Next, let's close those holes here. And instead of just checking end caps here, which would produce a single end gon, I'm rather going to use a polyfill, which has a few more options on how to create the topology that will make up this cap here. So let's disable smoothing here and set the fill mode to quad grid. And now we've got this pillbox shape here. So to get rid of that, let's just uncheck deform patch. And now we have this quad grid here on top and at the bottom of this tube. Next, I just want to move this tube up so it sits with its bottom at the zero plane here. So let's set the tube center to two units. And finally, wire both the tube and the circle and the scatter node into a copy to points, just like this highlighted. And you can see we just copied our individual tubes onto those points. Let's just save this for now. And now let's set up our simulation. In my opinion, the easiest way to simulate this is using Vellum, Houdini's newest built-in simulation engine, which is based on position-based dynamics, making it really fast compared to other simulation engines. And in order to use Vellum, I'll have to configure how to treat my geometry. So these tubes is my geometry. And now I'll have to tell Houdini how to treat this geometry in the simulation. In this case, I want to do a combination. On the one hand, I want the surface of these tubes to be cloth. And on the other hand, I want these tubes to have some sort of internal pressure keeping them from totally collapsing. Let's take care of setting up the cloth part of this by using a vellum configure cloth, which I'll wire below the copy to points by just shift and enter. And you can already see in white, this is what this node generates, a bunch of constraints, in this case, lines holding those individual points on our surface together. And for now, let's just try attaching a vellum solver to that again by highlighting this node here. And then after I type vellum solver here, just pressing shift and enter to attach the solver below R vellum cloth constraint like this. Let's zoom out a bit, save this and just hit play to see what comes out of the simulation. Well, not much, just a bunch of tubes falling straight down. So let's fix that by first attaching those tubes at the bottom here. For that, I'll need to create a group, just selecting those points that will be pinned to their position. Let's do that using a group node, just goes in here in between our copy to points and the vellum cloth. Just want to highlight this. And in this case, I want to select points and I want to select them by bounding regions. In this case, using a bounding box, which I'll scale to be a bit wider and deeper, but to be really small along the Y axis, like so. Making sure I select only the bottom points here in my tubes. Let's call this group pin. And in our vellum cloth constraint here, let's scroll down a bit. And under the pin to animation field here, let's select our pin group we just created. And that should be it. So let's highlight the solver again, zoom out a bit, and let's rerun the simulation. And that didn't really fix anything. It just turned our tubes into tubes colliding on themselves. So let's reset this. And in our vellum solver, let's disable gravity for now. Under the forces tab, make sure that in the gravity field, the Y component is set to zero like this. Again, let's resim this. And as there are no forces acting upon our tubes, nothing is really happening in that simulation. So let's stop this, reset this, and let's create some turbulence wind for that by diving into the vellum solver and attaching a pop wind node that is a particle operator's wind onto a force output. And the settings that I found out that kind of worked for me were a wind velocity of five along the Y axis, a noise amplitude of five with a swirl size size of three, like so. Again, let's go up one level, save this and re-simulate. And while this is looking more promising, we are seeing a bunch of problems here. The major one being that those tubes kind of collapse into themselves, into those flat strips here. So they are lacking this kind of internal pressure. Let's just reset our simulation and fix that by in here, inserting another constraint called a strut constraint. 
the vellum struts in here. And I'll just wire that in between my vellum cloth and the solver. Let's just highlight this here and attach a null to the center stream here. That's where the constraints are generated. That means that's all the geometry that kind of connects those points and tells vellum how to simulate these. And if we toggle between these vellum struts and just the vellum cloth, you can see that something is happening on the inside here. What struts is doing, it's trying to connect points on this mesh that are on opposing sides. And it tries to connect them with what you could argue is a spring, pushing those points that lie on opposite sides apart from each other and thus simulating kind of internal pressure. Let's zoom out, highlight our solver again and re-simulate. Okay, almost there. I think we have the main setup here. Now it's just dialing in values. So this is your really compact setup here. It's not more than nine nodes so far, if you don't count this null here. So now let's dial in a few settings. And again, this is usually a process of trial and error. And I will just enter a few values here that I found out in previous trial and error rounds. So in our vellum cloth, let's start from the beginning. I want to make sure that my edge length scale is set to one so that these edges on my cloth surface here do not collapse and do not compress. Then let's drag this down. I want to have my stretch stiffness dialed all the way up so that this cloth, this fabric we're simulating is not stretchy. And then in my bend constraint down here, I want to set this to the lowest value possible. So this is a very flexible, very well flowing fabric that we're simulating. Next down in our struts here, let's just drag this down and just scroll down a bit here. Let's just highlight this null so we can see what we're doing or get a general idea of what we're doing. So again, these struts constraints are those lines spanning across opposite points. And what I want to introduce is a bigger direction jitter here so that we're not trying to find points that are perfectly opposing each other, but allow for a bit of variation in here. And also I want to dial down the stiffness to not one times 10, but one times 0.1. So the internal pressure, so to speak, is not as big. Okay, let's highlight our solver again, zoom out as always, save this and then simulate. Okay, that is looking almost perfect, almost fine. However, I kind of think the resolution is a bit coarse. So what I of course could do now is either subdivide or increase the subdivisions here where I generate the two before I copy it onto my points. However, that would also increase my simulation times because we'd have to run the simulation over more points, more complex geometry. So what I like to do instead of using very high res simulation geometry, I like to use my simulated geo here and either subdivide it or use it to point deform a very high res geo. In this case, I think we're good by just subdividing this geometry and we could either use Houdini's subdivision node or as it has been specifically designed for vellum simulations, the vellum post process. I'll just attach down here below the solver. And in this case, I will just enable Catmull Clark subdivision as we are working on quads here with a subdivision depth of one. And now I just want to deactivate my wire shader, just switching my viewport to smooth shaded. And that is my resulting geometry. So let's save this. And we are now ready to cash out the simulation or add to it to our liking and build our final artwork. And of course, as always, I'm eager to see what you guys build with this. Again, if you're interested in how to pull this off in Cinema 4D, I recommend visiting Vince's Patreon, lots of other neat techniques and neat designs to view there. And if you're interested in more Houdini centric courses, you might want to consider becoming a patron of ours, allowing you to gain access to more in-depth courses. If you're already supporting us, Thank you so much. You make this possible what we're doing here. And a very special thank you goes out to Gearbox Studios Quebec, Important Looking Pirates, Rafe Canadol, and Chris Hebert. Thanks so much, guys. So until next time, it is cheers and goodbye.